the, the New York State Energy Plan, uh, uh, this, this all began with a state law that uh, is actually Article 6, adopted in 2009 by the state legislature, um, that basically said there shall be a state energy plan. It requires uh, the creation of an energy planning board, and these are the different agency members that you see on it. Basically, every important head of an agency here in New York is part of it, and it's chaired by the president of the New York State uh, Energy Research and Development Authority, which is NYSERDA. Uh, the fellow's name is, uh, pre is uh, John B. Rhodes. He's also presided at the various uh, uh, public hearings that have taken place so far. The timeline that we're dealing with is that a scoping document was produced in 2011. There were several uh, board meetings that they had. Uh, the energy plan itself was released in January, on January 7th of, of this year. But we didn't get the whole thing. We, there, there are two documents that are missing. They're still missing that we're waiting for a greenhouse gas inventory document, and uh, energy efficiency and renewables energy potential in New York State. These are critical documents that we're still waiting to see, and arguably it's really tough for us to comment intelligently on the plan when we haven't been given these documents. So that is something that uh, some organizations have already put in uh, uh, FOIL requests to try to get that information. Hopefully we'll get that before too long. There are six public hearings that have already, ta already taken place. Uh, written comments are due by April 30th of this year. Um, and it had been March 30th, but thanks to the good work of, of Jessica and, and, and other organizations, um, we've got that extended by 30 days. It's still not a lot of time, but we have until April 30th to comment. And they're targeting for adoption in the spring of, of, of this year. So when you open this thing up, you'll, you'll see, well, this is the document right here. Um, volume one is the first part of it. There are 15 different initiatives identified, and some of them are bold and sound actually kind of impressive. Some of them are downright bad, and you know we'll talk about that, uh, but all of them are vague. They talk about clean energy in vague terms without telling us what that means. Um, Governor Cuomo's Green Bank is discussed, and I'll, I'll mention this too. Energy efficiency infrastructure with an emphasis on natural gas, so this is a problem. Uh, this is a, a, a big concern with, with this document. And then you've got uh, volume two, which uh, breaks, uh, it's a lot of data basically. And you have a sources document that, that tells you where we're getting our energy from, uh, what kind of fossil fuels it is, whether it's nuclear. Um, the end use energy, how we're using it, is it fuel that's going into our cars or electricity? And then impacts and considerations, and you know, I'll talk to you about how this is woefully inadequate to consideration impacts and considerations too. Um, but, but, but basically, uh, you know, when, when we look at this document, a lot of us found ourselves asking, where, where is the plan itself? You've got volume one that has these kind of bold sounding initiatives, you have volume two that, that has a lot of data in it, but we're asking, where's volume three that actually says what we're going to do and how we're going to, how we're going to do it? Um, you know, how does the plan go address greenhouse gas emissions and climate change? And, and what is the goal of the percentage of energy that we're going to be getting from different places, and specifically renewables? And when is that going to happen? These things aren't spelled out. You know, we need some benchmarks to know how this is going to take place over time. How is this going to be phased in? Are we taking this seriously? Um, what kind of fossil fuel plants exist today? Which ones of those have to be shut down? How are we going to phase them in with renewables? to make the transition that we need to, to have. All these are important things that aren't really addressed in the plan. Um, what we got instead were a lot of graphs and charts and pictures, um, basically uh, indicating where we are today and indicating where different agencies think we might be going based on their own baseline forecasts of what the agencies think will be in the future. Uh, based on existing trends. So there's a lot of data and charts relating that, that type of thing. And, and, and then you'll see that this document is just like chock full of pictures, like really pretty pictures. <laughs> of, of solar panels and wind farms and, and people and, uh, and kids playing out on the street. And it's, I mean, it's, as, a, as a PR type of thing, this thing would get an A+. Plus. Um, but, but it means more in terms of real content. So lots of pictures. Um, and, and pretty people too. So I mean, <laughs> anyway, uh, 
And, and then you, you have these quotes that kind of jump out at the page for me, too. These, 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 uh, these words from, from people of importance, Thomas Edison and Ra Ra Rachel Carson, and they're good quotes, too. I mean, it's, if we did all the things we're capable of, we would literally astound ourselves. Well, we agree with that, and we want to be astounded, but this plan really is astounding us. And uh, Rachel Carson, you know, our, our hero, uh, I'm always more interested in what I'm about to do than what I have already done. This is a great quote. We're also interested in what the state's <laughs> going to do, not what they've already done or not done. Anyway, so uh, it's a little bit ironic. Um, so that kind of fell flat. And so what, <laughs> it didn't start out that way, and this is key, though. If we step back a little bit back in time and go back also to 2009, there was an executive order that was uh, uh, passed by Governor Patterson, and it was intended to address the critical issue of climate change. This is the executive order right there. Basically, it has an ambitious goal, goal assigned to it, essentially saying that it shall be the goal of New York State to reduce current greenhouse gas emissions from all sources by 80% below the levels that they were in 1990, and to do that by the year 2050. So that's a pretty bold goal, actually. Um, and uh, when you're talking about all sources, you're not just talking about energy, too. You're talking about agriculture, their methane emissions from, from agriculture, livestock, and so forth. I mean, it's everything. And, and even within energy, we're not just talking about power plants. We're talking about vehicles, vehicle emissions, uh, the fuel that we use in home heating, and so forth. All of these, these, these uh, an 80 percent reduction across the board from 19, below 1990. That's a pretty big, pretty tall order to achieve. But that was in the that was in the executive order from Governor Patterson. Again, like I said, it was all sources. Um, and they they had and they had a uh, climate action council to do this, and that group was charged with preparing a plan too with a draft report that was supposed to come out in November of 2010 and, and a final report in May of 2011. Um, they, they had an org chart and they had a schedule of things that they were going to do. Um, and, and they were looking at the actual issue too. I mean, this is not a graph you'll see in this energy plan, but it's something that was part of the discussion of the climate action group back then, um, where, where you're seeing where, where it was in 1990 where we're projected to be in 2025, and how far we have to go to meet the 80 percent goal. I mean, it's a, a you know, it's a it's a tough it's a tough topic, but it's something that they were attempting to address. Um, it all kind of fell apart. It all kind of fell apart when when Governor Cuomo entered office, and he really did not uh, 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 he didn't support the effort going forward. And so, uh, you know, if you go to that website. Uh, that, that was that, that I that was on that page before for the climate Act energy plan. You, it's a dead link. It, it doesn't exist anymore. Those activities are not going on. Um, but and this is the key thing. But nevertheless, uh, this energy plan still has the 80 percent reduction goal in it. So the big question becomes, how? How are you going to do it? How are you going to achieve that 80 percent goal when you you shut down your climate action committee and you're not looking at how you're actually going to achieve this? So this, this is the reality issue that we're, we're, we're having to ask. Um, sadly, the plan really only gives lip service to the 80% goal, and I'll, I'll tell you why here. It, it, and you have to bear with me as I try to talk about this, but the energy plan in volume one kind of says, well, we'll get to that 80% total reduction goal, but we'll get there by doing something different. We'll get there by... Um, Bringing down carbon emissions from one fossil, from one uh, from one uh, greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, uh, by 50 percent by 2030, and if we do that, that'll put New York on a pathway to achieving the 80 percent goal. Well, I mean, look look carefully at what they're doing here. 50 percent by 2030, measured only in CO2 emissions. That's the key the key thing here. That ignores methane. Okay, methane is the primary ingredient of natural of, of natural gas. And so when you're ignoring methane, you know, basically it's a blatant gift to the gas industry. I, I, I can't sugarcoat that. That's, what this, that's what's happening with that, of natural gas. And so when you're ignoring methane, you know, basically it's a blatant gift to the gas industry. I, I, I can't sugarcoat that. That's, what this, that's what's happening with that. Like I said, methane's a potent greenhouse gas, 34 times more potent than carbon dioxide over 100 years, and 86 times more potent over 20 years. 
I mean, that's a fact from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Um, so we don't have 100 years to solve this problem. You know, that 20-year time frame is ultra critical. Uh, scientists are telling us that if we do not address climate change like right now, uh, we're going to be seeing uh, incremental increases in temperature upwards of two to three degrees Celsius. Once that happens, you get into this hysteresis mode where you can't back down. Um, and it will be hundreds or a thousand years before we'll actually get to any reduction in temperature after we've hit that point. So it's, 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 it's a concern. Um, so uh, the EPA numbers on this, too, are also out of date. EPA uses a, a, a factor of 21 for their carbon dioxide equivalency for methane. Um, really, it should be 34. And again, like I said, they should be looking at the 20-year time frame. So there, there's, a, there's a lot to be desired here. And we also know that methane leaks. Uh, it leaks throughout systematically from the production at gas wells, the processing, transmission, storage, whether it's an LNG facility or some other storage, and in the distribution networks. Uh, we have all sorts of scientific research that's out there now by respected folks, um, Tony and Graffia, Robert Howard, and so forth, that have shown us that EPA has consistently um, underestimated the amount of methane emissions that are happening. And when you look, when you honestly look at the amount of methane emissions that are occurring uh, today, uh, you have to conclude that methane leakage causes natural gas to be equal to or perhaps worse than coal um, as a driver of climate change. Bottom line is we can solve the global climate crisis by just shuffling around among different fossil fuels. Um, basically, when we do that, we're just rearranging chairs on the Titanic. Okay, and speaking of the Titanic, um, uh, the Titanic didn't have enough lifeboats, but they had some lifeboats. Okay, planet Earth, as we know, there aren't rocket ships to take us some other place. We don't have any lifeboats. If we screw it up, then that's it. Uh, we, we can't afford to, to, to sink our ship. Um, we need to have renewable energy. I think that's something that everybody here recognizes. Um, Unfortunately, it's not something that the state energy plan recognizes. Uh, the, the, the plan that we have before us really is rolling out the carpet to natural gas, and that's, that, that's a concern. It does that in several ways. Um, the way it talks about clean energy is a problem. The, way the words they use, the term clean energy is used throughout the document, but the term is never really defined. Elsewhere in the document, you see the plan describing natural gas as clean, Therefore, we, 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 can, we can conclude that this document is promoting natural gas as a clean energy source, and that's a critical problem because we know uh, natural gas is not clean um, because of it's produced today by fracking, which we know is a, a dirty process, the air and water contamination, the public health threats, all the damage to rural lands and ecosystems, and like I said before, the methane leaks. All this means that all of this means that. Uh, that uh, fracking and natural gas is not a clean energy source. And sadly, these different things here are not even identified as problems in the volume two impacts and considerations. Well, I, sh I should say, there's a mention of fragmentation of ecosystems, it's like two sentences. Otherwise, you don't see these things talked about in the plan. Um, the consequence of this means that uh, many of the initiatives in volume one can and will be used to promote natural gas uh, and the development of natural gas infrastructure um, because it's being called clean energy. It's doing this in the form of public-private partnerships. There's one initiative in particular that talks about a green bank that Governor uh, Cuomo is, is, is uh, in favor of. And we, we'd be in favor of that, too, if the green bank's being used to uh, build wind uh, turbines and, and, and solar panels and, and promoting renewable energy. But if that green bank is going to be used to finance uh, natural gas projects, infrastructure for natural gas, and that's a big problem. So this ambiguity about the word clean is, becomes a pervasive problem throughout the plan. To finance uh, natural gas projects, infrastructure for natural gas, and that's a big problem. So this ambiguity about the word clean is, becomes a pervasive problem throughout the plan. Uh, there are programs identified in this, uh, in this plan to purchase, help purchase uh, compressed natural gas and liquefied natural gas vehicles. Again, this is a, a move in the wrong direction. Some of, several of the uh, initiatives in the plan actually explicitly promote the use of natural gas, uh, actually using words like acceleration and expansion. 
describe how we need to be moving faster uh, toward uh, the use of, of natural gas in terms of pipelines, distribution networks, LNG facilities, um, and the conversion of home heating fuel from oil to gas. All this is uh, identified as, as goals within the plan. Um, uh, as Anna said, you know, we're, we're, we're being bombarded by infrastructure impacts, even if fracking is neither permitted here in the state of New York, we're being bombarded by uh, infrastructure impacts, and, and those things are not addressed in this document either. Uh, you know, whether we're talking, we're not just talking about fracking, and, and, and we're not just talking about the physical impact of frank, fracking on the landscape, which we know is awful, uh, but also the pipelines and, and the compressor stations and, and the truck traffic, uh, which also spills over into New York. Uh, the fracking waste, which is spilling over into New York too. Uh, <coughs> The, the brine spreading that's happening on roads, the, the potential movement of, of fracking waste by barges, uh, the, 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 over, the, the flowback pits. This guy right here has just opened up the valve on the back and allowed it to legally dump out the back of the truck, fracking waste. This stuff goes on in Pennsylvania, and it's going to be happening up here too if we, uh, if we let it. So, and then, and then everything else. Okay, the power plants themselves, uh, uh, the LNG storage facilities, the potential export of LNG, all of these are part of the infrastructure picture that, that, that this plan is not comprehensively looking at. Um, and I'll give one example of an infrastructure uh, issue not far from where, where I live. It's the Constitution Pipeline. It's a, it's a pipeline project that's proposed to bring frack gas uh, from Pennsylvania over into New York and into New England. Um, and it's 120 miles long. It's uh, it's not following any existing easement. It's actually uh, carving a brand new, uh, uh, ripping a, a new corridor through the Northern Catskills. Uh, and it's fragmenting an ecosystem, which, which, which will be that way forever. It will be fragmented forever by this pipeline easement. So it also it crosses, I think, 277 streams in the process. So, so th th these are all impacts that we're feeling here in New York by the use of natural gas that we're bringing, even if we don't frack here in our state. Um, you know, you've heard about wind turbines and eagles and the problems that have happened. Well, an LNG plant in New Brunswick, Canada, just last year, in one night, killed 7,500 birds. There was a flare stack associated with that LNG plant and killed thousands of birds in one evening. So, it, it, you know. It's just another example. Uh, the plan ignores the safety and security issues that we've got here with natural gas. Um, just last week, eight people died. Six, 60 people got injured. Two, out, two, two buildings blew up and collapsed. Um, another issue I've been working on is LNG and the regulations that were, were proposed for LNG. Uh, Back in 1973, 40 people lost their lives when an LNG facility blew up. Um, and uh, unfortunately, what we're seeing is a push now to allow LNG facilities to be built once again in the state of New York. And so we're potentially facing these type of, of threats again. LNG is, uh, is a liquefied natural gas. In liquid form, it's 1 600th of the volume it takes as a gas. Uh, and the, re the way it's kept in a small compact form is by cooling it down, making it very cold. It's cryogenic temperatures, minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit. When it spills, it rapidly expands. And when it rapidly expands, um, it, it, it can become a, a vapor cloud and you light a match and you have a, a, a big explosion. So, so this is, th these are problems. Um, I, don't, I mean, everybody here knows that New York State has had more than its share of, of, of uh, horrible events as it relates to terrorism. Um, and uh, in 2008, there was actually a congressional report that identified liquefied natural gas as a particular threat. Basically, that report said LNG infrastructure is inherently dangerous and potentially attractive to terrorists. And when this report was written, um, there actually had not been an, an attack on, on an LNG plant. However, just last year, there was. In, 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 uh, uh, in, in Yemen, there was there was an attack on an LNG plant. So this is a threat. The, the the thing is, if we have more and more of these type of facilities 
occurring in our state, we're exposing ourselves to this threat. Again, it's not a topic that's addressed in the plan. And the plan, let's talk about fracking too for a second here. The plan is very wishy-washy about the subject. It does not rule out fracking. You know, there's been a little bit of misunderstanding here. Some have thought, have said that fracking is not talked about in the plan. It actually is. It's on page 88 of the sources document. It starts out with a statement that says that the state's natural gas production is expected to decrease. This sounds good. It says that we're expecting the natural gas production to decrease due largely to projected declines in production and a lack of new wells being drilled. So that starts out as a, with a sentence that we're all happy with. But then it includes a forecast anyway that shows uh, natural gas uh, ramping up. And it says, well, it's a conservative estimate. It actually could be more than this if permitting and production difficulties relating to horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing can be overcome. I'm not sure what a permitting difficulty is. I guess we're permitting difficulty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but anyway, so, so we're, we're, we're seeing this, this strange parsing of words. And then it concludes with a statement that says, well, regardless, regardless of, of the actions in New York State, the supply of, and the demand of, of gas will continue. And we don't have to worry because sufficient gas supplies should be available from outside the state as long as the interstate pipeline capacity exists to serve New York. So th this is the problem with infrastructure. And, and to me, I think there's, a, there's another moral issue here too. Uh, because essentially when we're saying things like that, we're, we're essentially saying that even if we decide that fracking is not safe for us here in New York, uh, then we're still peach and keen and everything's fine as long as we import frac gas from somewhere else to the detriment of those people in that other place. And to me, that, that, that's, a, that's a morally reprehensible stance to take. And I think all of us need to be pointing that out. Um, anyhow, uh, so that's garbage. Um, there's, there's another problem here um, relating to nuclear power, there, the way that the plan kind of creates another mechanism for promoting natural gas through the back door. Uh, by, by offering up these imaginary forecasts for the future of nuclear power. Uh, the plan assumes that we can continue to rely on today's existing aging nuclear reactors, and it even predicts even greater energy production from, from those reactors, uh, even though no new reactors have been proposed in New York State. And all the licenses uh, are set to expire before 2050, and I think some of them by 2040. Um, and, and Governor Cuomo himself and his administration has opposed the relicensing of Indian Point. Okay, so there's a reality problem here. Uh, the bottom line is when reality sets in, when nuclear power plants are going to be shut down, then you have this question, how are we going to deal with the energy uh, issue? And, and, and sadly, in the document itself, and you can find it on a particular page here, they talk about how if we shut down Indian Point, we can still be okay, we'll get gas. Um, we, can, we can fill that gap with gas. It would require 31% more power from natural gas uh, forecasted by 2020. That's their solution. That's, a, that's not the right answer. Um, again, that's garbage. So, uh, you know, what does the plan say about renewable energies and renewable energy and efficiency? Well, Again, we've established there are lots of pictures in the document of, of, of solar panels and, and wind, wind turbines. That's nice. But the fact is the plan forecasts little growth in renewables, and really it, it shows that growth ending after 2020. Um, it admits to, to missing the renewable portfolio standard target that was set for 2015. They're not going to make that. Um, they talk about extending the renewable portfolio standard program to 2025, but it doesn't set any targets for, for, do, for, for what those um, should be. Um, and, and it concludes, sadly, that the potential for, for renewables is limited. They're basically saying that no matter how hard we try, no matter how, we, how hard we might try, the best we can do is to get 18% of our energy needs met uh, by renewables in 2020, and at the best we could ever get is 37% by 2030. Um, that's not going to solve our, our, our greenhouse gas problems. That's not going to get us to where we need to be. Um, and, and, and disturbingly, this statistic, this claim about what we cannot do, 
is buried in this document, which is one of the two documents that we haven't been allowed to look at yet. So, um, on energy efficiency, it's kind of a, a similar message here, unfortunately. They vaguely refer to improving building codes and encouraging greater enforcement, but they really don't say how they're going to do that. There aren't any particular building codes that they're talking about improving. There aren't any specific actions that have been identified for enforcement. Um, the, uh, the plan discusses the energy efficiency portfolio standard, but it only commits to that program through 2020, and again, it doesn't set any targets for the future either. Um, and I also got to point out that the existing efficiency targets aren't being met either. There was a 15 by 15 goal of reducing New York, New York State energy demand 15% with energy efficiency improvements by 2015. That's not uh, being met. And there was actually a plan a, a few years ago, which was called a 45 by 15 initiative, uh, that said we're going to meet 45% of New York State's electricity needs with renewables and efficiency by 2015 next year. That's not even close to happening. So you don't even see that talked about. It. Um, again, the document concludes that the potential savings and efficiency for electricity um, is less than, 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 than it really is. Uh, basically, they're, they're saying it's a 43%, but when you, when you, when you dig deeper, um, that the most you can actually achieve in terms of efficiency is only 20%, and that's the best we can hope for. Again, I can't tell you their analysis because I can't see it because it's in the document that we haven't been allowed to look at. So, what, what does this all mean? Well, well th this is a chart, one of many, many charts uh, about, that, that depicts a forecast of, of just where electrical energy is going to be coming from in the future. 2012, 2020, 2030. Um, I, I looked at their data, and I just because I was interested in this with the shutdown at Indian Point, what how this table changes, um, and uh, I, I using software, I was able to to, to create these these pie charts. Um, this is a forecast of failure. This is 2012. That's 2030. This is what's. Uh, this is what the plan forecasts. More natural gas, you know, you can see renewables here. This is, renewables in this case means wind and solar. Hydro is, is this 16% here. Okay, 20% now, 20% in the future. We're, we're not seeing progress here. Meanwhile, we are seeing more natural gas happening. If you put, take, again, I was interested in what happens with Indian Point coming out of the picture. More natural gas. So, this is not, this is not the future we want to have. Um, and, and the reason these forecasts are important are important to understand by everybody here is that there's a particular provision in the New York State Energy Law. It's the Article 6 that I started out with talk, discussing. There's a particular provision that says any energy-related actions or decisions of a state agency, board, commission, or authority shall be reasonably consistent with the forecasts and policies that are in this plan. So, if you have a document that gives you these kind of baseline forecasts of where things are, of what will happen in the future if we don't do anything, but then the plan does not go on to say with what, what the future will be if we take strong specific action, then, that, then you're, you're, you're left with a, a horrible situation whereby the danger, I mean the danger ends up being is that in the absence of planning that these forecasts, the baseline forecasts, will become the de facto plan. Okay, and this will, you know, citing that provision of the statute, they can say, well, this is what we have to abide by. This is the future that we need to prepare for. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of even greater dependency on fossil fuels. Um, so what do we want? What we want is a real plan that takes the threat of climate change seriously with decisive action and measurable benchmarks for switching New York State from fossil fuels to renewables. That's what we really want, right? Um, we, we need to do this because it's the only way we're going to meet the 80 percent reduction goal is by a switch to renewables uh, in, a main, in, a, in a major way because it's the only way to achieve the lasting energy independence that we could achieve here for New York State and, and as a nation by switching to renewables. Um, it's the only way to avoid the global climate catastrophe that we're going to face if we don't. And, and frankly, like I said before, I think it's our ethical responsibility to others who share this planet with us and who suffer from the ruinous impacts of fossil fuel extraction, like in Pennsylvania. So, you know, the, the, the good news is that we do have a uh, we, we, we do have a model to, to look at. Uh, 
just last year, there was a report and that was prepared by uh, several uh, uh, prestigious uh, experts, scientists and economists, uh, Mark Jacobson, Howard, uh, Robert, Robert Howarth, um, um, Tony and Graffia, and so forth. Uh, they came up with a plan that said, we actually could move to renewables. And if we really wanted to put, get our act together, we could do it by 2030 to get to 100% renewables in this state. And they laid out what it would take to do it, okay? What kind of facility improvements would have to be made? What kind of facility changes would have to occur? Um, you know, I, I don't know that that is feasible because of politics as it is, but it is a model that we need to be looking at. I think, I think all of us believe it needs to be considered as part of this plan. We need to look, look at the wisdom that was in that, in that, in that paper. Um, and what our plan needs to do uh, at a minimum is establish some specific benchmarks, uh, a specific target for meeting at least half of our electricity needs, uh, power generation electricity needs with renewables by 2025. That's something that NRDC is also saying. I think it's something we can all uh, find common ground in, in, in demanding. Uh, we need to establish a long-range goal of weaning New York State entirely off of fossil fuels. We can do that by 2050 if we try. Um, and we need to know that when other uh, fossil fuel plants or nuclear power plants uh, retire, that they're not going to be replaced with frac gas, that, that, that we are going to move to renewables. Um, and we need to have specific action with measurable targets over time to achieve this goal. So instead of talking about uh, looking at just methane emissions in 2050 and thinking we're, talking, we're, we're, we're going to cover everything we need to look at in the future, no, we need to have specific targets for total greenhouse gas reductions, and we need to see some measurable, pro measurable progress in this over time. So the plan ought to be identifying specific targets over time of how we're going to bring the total reduction of greenhouse gas down, not just carbon dioxide, but all greenhouse gases, which include methane, and do it at specific benchmarks that we can measure, including benchmarks within the time frame of this administration, or the, I guess, uh, Governor Cuomo's next administration. Um, this is what has to happen if we're serious about the issue of climate change. Um, we should be seeing a schedule of power plant conversions uh, identified, what kind of infrastructure improvements are needed, uh, some specific information in this plan about building codes and appliance requirements, which does not exist right now. Um, we need to see a, an honest discussion of incentives for distributed, distributed generation and, and efficiency. Um, and, and specific action reduce, to reduce emissions in the transportation sector, too. I haven't talked about transportation that much. Um, but I will point out one thing. There was an agreement reached by eight states, including the state of New York, just last year, a memorandum of understanding, to collectively put 3.3 million zero-emission vehicles on the road by 2025. So those aren't natural gas vehicles. Those are zero-emission vehicles, battery, um, you know, electric vehicles or hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Um, the sad thing is you have like one sentence about this very big plan. To me, this is something that's incredible, an incredible opportunity, and this would be the place, this plan to talk about how we're going to work toward meeting this goal. But we don't see that. Um, the other thing the plan needs to do is assess the full cost of continuing to rely on fossil fuels. Uh, Price volatility, especially from exports, really the plan just says this is an issue that should be monitored. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, address the, 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 the issue of price volatility uh, with LNG being potentially exported overseas at all. Um, again, the cost associated with all the negative impacts of fracking and gas infrastructure, there's a dollar cost with this stuff too. The demand on police, fire, and hospital, road damage, air and water contamination, medical costs and lost wages, uh, all of these things are factors that, that need to be looked at and they're not considered in the plan, but they should be. Uh, the plan also talks about having a goal of maintaining robust economic growth. Well, robust economic growth is not likely in the middle of a climate catastrophe like what we've seen with Hurricane Sandy, or Storm Sandy. Um, the flip side of that is the plan should also embrace the benefits of renewable energy, and that means uh, 
uh, having a, a frank and honest discussion about the benefits in terms of jobs that would be created. Uh, University of Massachusetts uh, did a study that identified uh, that going with renewables, we could create like three times as many jobs uh, uh, than, than you do with fossil fuels. And uh, the Jacobson plan uh, actually identified that if we go to renewables, we could create 50,000 permanent jobs in renewable energy right here in the state of New York. Uh, we could bring our price stability. Price stability could be could be uh, could be achieved because we would have, be having zero fuel costs. If you don't, if, you know, if the cost is free, basically sunlight and wind, um, you achieve price stability that way. Um, air pollution uh, would drop, and that would mean 4,000 less deaths per year and related costs of 33 billion dollars per year in savings if we were to go with renewable energy and. Uh, New York's contribution uh, to the total climate costs for the country uh, would, would, would be brought down as well if we went to renewable energy. So, um, you know, that, that's what I was going to say. Uh, comments, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll mention a little bit about how you can comment on the plan. Um, April 30th is the deadline, like I said. That's the website, nysenergyplan.com, and there's a, and there's a, uh, that's where you send comments to if you're going to do it by, by paper mail as well. Um, if you go to the energy plan uh, website, click on the comment box, that will open up a field that you fill out and you can submit your comment. Uh, there's another really neat thing that you can do. I've been working with a group called Catskill Citizens for Safe Energy and uh, they have a website. We've identified, we've created basically 22 letters. So you can look at their sample letters. Topic, talking about different topics relating to this subject. And um, uh, basically, when you go to that website, you're presented with a, with, with, with a sample letter, and you can edit it. You can enhance it. In fact, you would enhance it and, and personalize it and submit it, and then it'll give you the next one. There are a total of 22 of them if you want to go all the way through and, and, and submit those comments. That would be much, much appreciated.